Have you been perfected by the knowledge, the revelation, and the understanding of who Jesus Christ is? I'm going to share with you what it means to be perfect, and I'm going to show you how you can be perfect in Christ. I'm sharing this word because I believe God deeply desires for his people to be perfect. When you are perfect, power will flow out of you. Love will flow out of you. You will operate in the anointing and the assignment God has graced you for when you know your perfection in Christ. I'm going to open up here in Matthew 5, 48 for you. Jesus says, therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Wow, that sounds like a mighty request. That sounds like a, a mighty ask from Jesus to be perfect, just as the heavenly Father is perfect. What does that even mean? Here I have it in the Greek for you. This is the Blue Letter Bible. It says, brought to its end, finished. Wanting nothing necessary to completeness. completeness. So it means to be brought to its end, to be finished, to want nothing. When you are perfect, you know that you lack nothing. You don't desire anything apart from the will of God. You are perfect and complete, lacking nothing. One of my favorite verses to go with this is Psalm 23, 1. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Another translation says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. So when Jesus is your shepherd and he reigns as the king of your heart, you know that you don't lack anything. You don't want anything. You are complete because all of your joy is found in Jesus. It's not found in the things or the materials of this world or worldly pleasures, but your joy is found in Jesus. So even though things may get taken from you, even though you may lose some things in this life, you will still have your joy in Jesus because he is what completes you. He is what perfects you. So when Jesus talks about hey, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. He's not talking about being sinless. He's not talking about being flawless. He's talking about being complete, knowing that you don't lack anything. Paul said that even though he goes through trials, distresses, tribulation, suffering, sleeplessness, all of these different persecutions, he is poor, yet he is rich. He lacks nothing because all of his satisfaction is found in Jesus Christ. And this is a powerful place to be. But we don't want to just say that we're perfect or speak that we're perfect. We want to truly be complete in our hearts with Jesus Christ. And if you believe this, God will test you in this. This is Matthew 19, 21. Jesus is speaking to the young, rich ruler. He's speaking to this young, rich ruler who obeys all the commands, and he's seeking really to justify himself, knowing that he was, you know, good from his youth, obeying the commands of God, walking in obedience. But then Jesus tests him with this one word, in Matthew 19, 21, Jesus says to him, If you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. So Jesus now presents this test to this rich young man, saying, Go, sell what you have, give it all to the poor, and then you will be complete and then you will lack nothing. What he's saying to this young rich man is that he's idolizing his riches. He's idolizing his possessions above Jesus. On the other hand, it's not bad to have a lot of riches. It's not bad to have a business and be successful working for the glory of God. But if God calls you to give and you can't give, 
Yeah, there's an idol in your heart. So God is not telling every single Christian to go and sell all that they have and give to the poor so that way you have nothing and you have no money to pay your bills. What he is saying is don't have any idol in your heart. Don't place anything above him. God may call you into business and he may bless you with a lot of finances, but this is for those who are good stewards. God blesses you to give to others. So when God tests you in your completeness and you can't carry out that test, yeah, there's an idol in your heart and then there's a big problem and you are not that perfect man that God desires for you to be. So one way to receive and reach this true completeness with Jesus is through the renewing of the mind. I know you know this verse, but there's a fresh revelation in Romans 12 too. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Sometimes in order to know the perfect, the complete will of God within your soul for your life, you need to be renewed because you have different wants. You have different desires that are not from God that need to be uprooted. They need to be taken out. You may have a mindset that you always need more or that you need to please people. Having a mindset that you need to please people or that you need money, that you lack money, that you lack a significant other, this takes you away from the perfection that is in Jesus Christ. So you need to be renewed in the mind continually walking in repentance. Repentance means to change your mind. It comes from the Greek word metanoia. Meta mean to change. Noia mean the mind. You need to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Refreshed, renovated in your thoughts daily to bring you more and more towards the knowledge of this complete man. Because Jesus said, I came to give you life and give you it more abundantly. Jesus has an abundant life for you, but this thief is coming to steal, kill, and destroy some thoughts in your mind. He wants to give you a mind of lack, saying that you, you need this. I, I need this boyfriend. I need this girlfriend. I need this relationship. I need this job. I need this upgrade. I need this nicer car. I need this new thing. I need this vacation. I, I need this. And of course, to say these things aren't bad, right? It's not bad to be in a relationship. Of course, it's not bad to have a marriage. It's not bad to have a nice car. It's not bad to take a vacation. But what place is it coming from in your heart? When you are complete, God will bless you and know that to whom much is given, much will be required. So if you are someone who is blessed with many things, know that God is requiring much from you as a steward. 1 Corinthians 14.20 says, Brethren, do not be children in understanding. However, in malice be babes, but in understanding be mature. This word mature, it's the same word as perfect in the Greek. Okay, so I confirmed all these verses in the Greek because um, it'll be written differently in different scripture. But here, this word mature, it means be perfect. So you don't want to be a child in understanding. In understanding, you want to be rich. One of the spirits of God in Isaiah 11 is the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of the Lord, right? The spirit of counsel. You want to be rich in the understanding and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, pursuing him with your whole heart. Be rich, 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 rich in this. But in malice, in anger, in frustration, right? Be babes, right? Be, be, don't, don't, don't have this. Don't fellowship with these things. You don't need these things. Amen. <laughs> so an understanding, an understanding be perfect, just 
as your father is perfect. Be be complete, right? Always grow in understanding. James 1 verse 3, it says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So if you do believe, again, that you are perfect or complete, you're still going to go through a process. God will still refine you because gold, it, it can get uh, impurities come forth when gold goes through fire. When precious stones go through fire, they get carved out greater. This pressure builds this diamond. But when the wood, the hay, the straw goes through the fire, it gets burned. So even though you may be complete and perfect, you're still a human being going through a process. There's still a process to your life. There's a process for God to give you the desires of your heart. But you always must be renewed in your mind and test your desires. Who is it really for? Is it for you or is it for the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ, and his glory? So knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, meaning endurance, perseverance. Verse 4, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Again, this is God's desire that you are perfect, complete, mature, lacking nothing because Jesus Christ dwells in your heart so richly. He is your shepherd. He makes you lie down in green pastures. He leads you beside the still waters. You know that you shall not want because he fulfills your greatest needs. He fulfills all of your desires. He is the richness and the Holy Spirit is the water that abides abundantly flows within you. Hallelujah. And we have the church to help bring us to this man. In Ephesians 4, we have the spiritual gifts. It says there's some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till what? Till we all come to the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man. So we have the gifts, the ministry gifts of other people are going to bring you to this man. Some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, all right, will help bring you to the knowledge of a perfect, complete person. So don't despise discipleship. Don't despise church. Don't despise going to the Sunday service, going to the Bible study, being a part of the small group fellowship. Don't despise these things because they will bring you to that perfect, complete man. And there's nothing like being complete in Jesus, knowing that he reigns in your heart, that you're seated in heavenly places, blessed with every spiritual blessing. There's nothing like being in Christ and worshiping him in spirit and in truth. So may God bring you to the knowledge of this perfect man. Because as it says in 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love, complete love, it casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. God bless you, my friend. Thank you for joining me. Be made perfect in the love of Jesus Christ. And I will see you soon on the next episode. Bye-bye.